The world's fastest speed cubers use this method to solve the Rubik's Cube under 5 seconds and break world records. Hey what's up guys, Paradox here. Today I'll be explaining to you what the CFOP method is, how it works, how speed cubers manage to get so fast with it, and how you can start learning it today. The CFOP method consists of four different parts. The cross, F2L, OLL, and PLL. You're probably wondering what these all mean, but don't worry, I'll explain everything in this video. First of all, there are different levels of expertise for each of these stages. So you can have a beginner CFOP solver averaging about 50 seconds, and then you can also have an advanced CFOP solver averaging around 10 seconds, even though they both use the exact same method. I'll talk more about this throughout this video, but first let's discuss step one of the CFOP method. The cross is something that you already know from beginner's method. So that's nice that one step carries over to CFOP, and it's basically the first step to solving the first layer, which involves solving these four edge pieces. Cubers mostly solve the cross completely intuitively by looking at how the edge pieces are moving around the cube, and you'll get a lot better at that with practice. But you may be wondering how a beginner's method tactic plays a role in an advanced speed cubing method. Essentially, there are advanced techniques that you can apply to the cross to speed it up and solve it a lot faster. And like for example, using inspection time before you start solving to plan out your entire cross. You can solve multiple edges at once. You can solve the cross at an offset and then realign it at the end. So yeah, it's basically the same thing as in beginner's method, but you just have to find more creative ways of solving it to get faster at it. You can check out this video to see how to get faster at the cross or even just learn the beginner's method cross if you don't know how to do that yet. The second step of CFOP is called F2L, and it's also an acronym that stands for first two layers. In the beginner's method, you would solve the cross, then move on to solving the corner pieces, and then the edge pieces all one by one. With F2L, you essentially are solving both the first layer and the second layer at the same time by creating these corner and edge pairs and inserting them into their designated slots. You do this four times and you complete F2L solving the first two layers. Now the hard part with F2L is figuring out how to create these corner and edge pairs in the first place and then also making sure that you're doing it efficiently and not taking like 100 moves to solve these four pairs. This can seem daunting at first seeing as there are over 70 different scenarios that you can encounter in F2L. But similar to the cross, most people learn and solve F2L completely intuitively, which means they observe the pieces around the cube and rearrange them into a scenario that they know so that they don't have to memorize like 70 different scenarios. So for beginners, these 70 different cases can be simplified all the way down to only three different fundamental cases that you need to learn to be able to fully solve F2L on your own. Okay, so that makes F2L fairly easy to get started with, but now you're not being as efficient as possible. So to make sure you're not taking hundreds of moves to solve F2L, you'll have to start learning more algorithms for difficult cases to be more efficient. And then you can also go into learning more advanced techniques, like solving multiple pairs at once, looking ahead to analyze the next case you want to solve before you're even done solving the current one, and also solving F2L pairs during the cross. This is how speed cubers manage to solve F2L within just a few seconds, compared to where a beginner may be taking 30, 40, 50 seconds on just F2L alone. Alright, now let's talk about OLL, which stands for orienting the last layer. After solving the cross and F2L, we're left with the last layer to solve. We start this with OLL to orient all of the pieces, which just means they're all rotated properly so that the yellow side is solved but they're not necessarily in the right location yet, which is what we'll work on after OLL. Orienting the last layer comes down to using algorithms, and in total there are 57 different OLL cases that you can encounter, so that's how many algorithms you'll have to learn. Luckily, as a beginner CFOP solver, you can start off by learning to look OLL, which is essentially just breaking up OLL into two stages. First, you're gonna orient all of the edge pieces to make the yellow cross and then we can orient all the corners after to finish off OLL. This is useful because instead of having to learn 57 different OLL algorithms, you only have to learn two, one for the edges and one for the corners. The obvious way to get faster at OLL as a beginner is to learn more algorithms and work your way up to all 57. And then after that, you can improve even further by working on your finger tricks, your recognition, 
and also solving your F2L so that it gives you an easier OLL case. Okay, so after we orient all of the pieces on the last layer, we now have to move them to their proper positions to finally solve the cube. And this brings us to the last stage of CFOP, PLL. PLL stands for permuting the last layer, and in total, there are 21 different PLL cases for which we also need to learn algorithms. Although there are half as many algorithms for PLL, they are lengthier and they're not very similar to each other, which makes them harder to learn than OLL algorithms. And they're also a little bit harder to recognize as well. So that'll slow you down too. Thankfully though, like with OLL, most people start by learning to look PLL so that you can at least get the hang of the CFOP method and start solving it, even if you're not being that optimal. And again, similar to to look OLL, we permute the edges and the corners separately in to look PLL. Except the difference here is that we're going to permute the corners first and the edges second. So you're going to have these headlights all around the cube when your corners are fully permuted. And finally, we're going to permute the edges to solve the cube. So this means we only have to learn two algorithms instead of learning all 21 cases for PLL. It's a little bit harder to improve on your last layer than it is with, for example, the cross and F2L because those are solved intuitively and it's much easier to find more efficient ways to solve them. When it comes down to the last layer, you're pretty much stuck with improving your finger tricks, your regrips, and your recognition, predicting what cases you're gonna get, and you can also apply some tricks where you can solve OLL cases so that you can get a PLL skip at the end. So just to quickly pause for a second before we move on to the summary of the video, I'm editing the video right now and I wanted to just clarify a couple of small things. So this video is meant to give you an overview of how CFOB works and explain the different aspects and concepts of it, not necessarily teach you every single little detail and how to exactly do it because that would take a lot longer than just one video, which is why I have a whole series of videos that teach you exactly how to do that. But this video is just meant to explain all the different concepts that you may be hearing, different terms like F2L, OLL, all these different things. So just to basically um, take all those concepts, put them together in one video and explain what is going on with CFOP, how it all works. Um, that's kind of like the intention of this video, just an overall bird's eye view high level overview, um, not getting into a lot of specifics. So you may have noticed in the OLL part, I was talking about algorithms and things, but I didn't actually give you any algorithms. I didn't show you which ones to use or how to use them. I was just showing you that that's how this aspect or this part of CFOP works. That's how you solve OLL using algorithms. But if you guys actually want to learn it, um, that's why I'm saying you got to learn watch individual videos and look at different tutorials that I've posted. So I've got a whole series on that and I've got a whole playlist linked in the description. There's one more thing that I didn't touch on in this video and that was after learning beginner CFOP, what do you do next? Of course, yeah, you're going to learn intermediate CFOP and you're going to learn the individual steps like in F2L, you're going to learn all those techniques I talked about, but exactly how are you supposed to do that? Which, or actually I should say, which order should you learn it in? Should you just learn advanced cross first? or maybe you're supposed to do OLL algorithms next. What is the best route to take after beginner CFOP to get even faster? That I'll be covering in a future video. It hopefully is aimed towards people who know how to do CFOP now at a beginner's level and they want to get even faster. So it's more targeting intermediate CFOP solvers. But I, hopefully this sort of made you understand what I was going for with this video. This isn't exactly a tutorial, just an overall explanation of how CFOP works and what is going on with CFOP so you can get a uh, you can understand the big picture essentially all right anyway enough of this side note now back to the actual video all right so to summarize there are four different stages of CFOP there is the cross F2L OLL and PLL there are different levels of CFOP ranging from beginner all the way to expert and that's how SpeedCubers managed to solve with this method under five seconds. I would say that the hardest step to work on out of all of these is probably F2L, and that's what most people struggle with, but there are plenty of resources out there that you can use to get faster at F2L and the rest of the CFOP stages. Check out my CFOP tutorials playlist to find out exactly how you can start solving with the CFOP method and how you can reach sub 15 times doing so.
If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on more cubing tutorials and reviews. And don't forget to smash that like button because it helps me out a lot and helps this video get seen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.